Welcome back to the All American YouTube channel. Um, Merry Christmas. It's something around that time of year or so. That doesn't work. <laughs> <laughs> you were so psyched to have that work. I was. <clears throat> Why did it frozen though? Merry Christmas, y'all. Have a happy, healthy new year. Let's get straight into the video. All right, so here we are. Step one is we're gonna actually get these pedals put in. So we already got the uh, old pedals removed. So with this, you should you should be able to use the stock automatic pedal um, holder bracket, and you should just be able to slide the brake pedal up into the old spot and the clutch pedal right alongside, and it should sit properly. I will show you how that works here yes. real quick. I'm going to try to get this in. So, we got the clutch pedal and whatever in. And you can see it up there. This one, this is the clutch right here. And basically... There's just a big bolt that runs the brake pedal. The original automatic brake pedal is sandwiched in between those two pieces of metal you can see. One right here and the other one's over here. And it's just sandwiched in there and there's normally a short bolt that just sandwiches those two in. And uh, with the manual conversion kit, it just sticks out um, past this right here and the clutch pedal is just hung on the end right here like that. And you just gotta get a, the bolt and shove it all the way through, and the nut goes on on this end over here. And then, oh, we got this here clip. You gotta make sure you get um, this bar is what actually goes to the brake booster, and then you slide on this peg on the new brake pedal. And get this clip, which I need light to see. You gotta slide the big hole in the, slide the end over the big hole, and then clip it on over. What? I'm just talking to the camera. Don't worry about it. Ouch! That felt good. All right. So what we've done is we've done. Shut that thing off. Right so what we did is we measured from the motor mounts on the motor to the tip of the shifter, or where the shifter comes up on the transmission, and it was 40 inches. And then we went and took that measurement and measured from the motor mounts on the car and stuck the tape measure underneath here. And lo and behold, 40 inches is pretty much right about here on this hole, like right in the center slash towards the back end. So that's about, just eyeballing it, that's about where we need the, the hole to come through on the shifter. So we're just going to whack this out with the angle grinder real quick, and we ain't going to record none of it, because it's going to be really loud. And if we need to adjust the hole to make it bigger, we can do that later. <clears throat> but that's uh, step one. or Six. Or yeah, one of the steps. Also, those pedals look amazing. Alright, so the next thing that we got to do is take this shifter out and there was one bolt going through in that hole right there and uh i'd be careful because there's a bunch of stuff in there that it's not moving here oh, there's another bolt yeah. right here got it one of these deals take this bolt off first once maybe <clears throat> We really don't know how to take these shifters off, but you got to take the shifter off to get it into the you car. Need <coughs> so that the shifter doesn't hit the tranny tunnel. Oh boy, nine sixteenths might be hard to find. What's this? Good. That's a half inch. That's not it. 
Are you okay with just a regular one? With a wrench, or do you want a socket? Or get me a minus screwdriver. On the quest to find some tools. That looks like one. This is a minus. I don't see a persuader in here anywhere. <laughs> yep. Alright, I'm gonna record so we can watch and see how many pieces go flying everywhere. I wouldn't do that, maybe. Just a thought. That might cause a bunch of problems. Yeah. Is it just like a little sleeve in there? Yep. It's not coming out. Where's the, uh... How else can we take this apart? I don't want to pop it off just yet, though. I do. Here. Let's just do it this way. Here, look, Peter. We can take this off, and we can take off each one of these three bars on the bottom. They're just held on with cotter pins. Exactly how this all goes together. The wrong way. That looks promising. Just don't screw it up. <laughs> yeah. Should we just undo all these? Um, maybe. I guess if you want to pop the pins on. Because there's just we've got a. I put spacers. There's in. cotter pins on the back sides of all these. That way we don't have to try to mess with these bolts and <coughs> unlining these things. <coughs> well, I need two hands for that. But yeah, there's there's a cotter pin on the back side here. You can see this one right here, and then there's another. There's a cotter pin on that one right there. Alright guys, it has only been probably two, maybe three hours and we went from engine laying on the floor to engine in the car. We're actually getting good at this. Move your knee. I'm not going to touch it, I'm just going to look at it. Wow, that's really dark. Yeah, it was actually pretty easy to put that in. We just lowered the transmission down enough so we could fit the shifter in. And then... Uh, Peter just dangled it down. I put on those two bolts that we took off and now Peter's underneath there right now just hooking up the linkages It's all just going on the exact same way. We took it off <clears throat> Just putting in the little arms and uh, putting the counter pin on the other side yeah. We didn't touch any of the nuts on anything. All we did was take out the cotter pins. If you do it that way, everything should still be lined up the way it's supposed to. As long as you don't spin any of the nuts on there. A lot of those arms have like little adjustable nuts on them. And uh, that'll 
so you can like adjust the arms, but if it's already adjusted, just don't buzz with any of it. I think it should be good. Come on, there we go. That's a big cotter rib. Actually, no, it's not. It's really small. There we go. Obviously, this is sitting a lot lower than it's going, going to, be. to be. Which is probably, come to think of it, why uh, it's so hard, been so hard to put those uh, water mount bolts in. Probably. Beautiful. So, we actually finally got a shifter in here that works the way it should. And it's pretty awesome. It's a little bit lower right now, but... Yeah, yeah, because the transmission is still just on a jack. We don't actually have the trans support in, so it's not in its final place. But we, uh, we cut the hole out right, and yeah, we got... All the gears, first, second, third, fourth, and then reverse. It's pretty darn perfect. Four speed life, brother. Oh yeah, it's gonna be amazing. So uh, the next step, we're gonna get the train support in, and then the drivetrain is pretty much locked down. Huh. And we've been at it for, well, we took a couple breaks, but we've been at it for four hours. We're going to start getting the, the uh, cross member in. We're going to have to organize some stuff for that. But uh, we'll be back when we actually start throwing that together. We just lit the thing on fire. Yeah, you going to do that again so I can get it on camera? Probably not. I don't want to. Okay, well, we just lit Peter's car on fire. So what what are you doing right here now? What's just, the this here is off to the side more than we thought. So All right. I'm gonna go jack her up. We'll see if we clear it. All right. So we finally got the uh, the hole cut big enough, and uh, as you can see. The, uh, the trans support actually just sits on top of the K-frame, which is a mint design. Instead of getting bolted into the bottom of the K-frame like those stupid third gens, this is a way sweeter design. And then there's um, just these two big holes right here. And we just send some nuts through there and uh, bolt it on. Watch out. Oh yeah. She's got lots more. That's about it. Perfect. That's what we want to see right there. Scooch it. Where's the hole? Yeah, so up through here there's a smaller hole essentially, and we're just uh, cinching the the transmission support down on top of the uh, on top of the subframe here. It's pretty simple stuff. I hope we're doing a good enough job of explaining how we're proceeding here. Probably not, but okay. Um, there's probably better videos out there for this stuff. Alrighty, we are back. We got our uh, support up there. Got our bolts in place. Adam's just tightening up his side. Anything else? Yep. You got some rust in his eye. Nice. It's good for you. Yeah, as soon as Adam gets his bolts tightened up, we're going to let her down and then tighten up the middle guy. Alrighty, here we are. Um, day two. 
Last night we worked till about 2 o'clock in the morning, and then uh, we quit. So day two, we got um, a block, some head gaskets, and some heads. These are the old heads. They suck, but we're going to put them on anyways just because. And, you'd, yeah, use our new head bolts over here, and that'll be about it. All right, so we're getting in the final-ish stages of putting the engine together. Right now we're kind of just uh, putting everything on just to get it. Uh, you got an issue here, but that gasket just fell in. We're just putting all the stuff on it just to keep it clean. Just to keep dust and crap out of the intake valley. We got the heads torqued on. And now we're just, uh, I'm finishing up putting rock arms on this side here. We got them all laid out from, uh, last time we did this. When we took it apart, we laid them all out nice. You need help or no? I hope you don't because my hands are full. All right, we're dumping the oil in because we kind of got the intake bolt done already. So we're going to just dump it down the distributor. Because it'll it'll go into the same spot. So I figured we'd record this because we're about to make a huge mess. Yeah. No, you're about to make a huge mess. I'm about to laugh at you when you do. Is the plug in the block? Yes. <laughs> That'd be hilarious. Just dumping dumping a pile out the bottom. Oh oh oh. No! Oh! It got caught on my jacket. Dog on it. Ha <laughs> ha. There it is. Look at that mess. Oh, crap. A bigger mess. Okay, get it out of there before you're making a bigger mess. No, it's six fine, drops man. ain't going to matter. That's how you do it, folks. That's how you do it. <laughs> you got to use the dump the thing sideways trick so it doesn't do the cold blood blood thing. All right, you guys. Um, Adam's finishing up his clutch guard plate down there. I got this side header to fit, which is right there, but I could not get the other C10 header to fit on the other side, no matter how much I smashed it. But this header fits just fine on this side, the, the new one does. So what we're thinking for right now is we're just going to go with a mismatch, that header and that header, uh, just because I don't got money to put in headers right now that wasn't in part of my budget so yeah um i'm putting on the valve covers distributor and carburetor while he's doing that and then once we're done with that then we'll probably start getting into the clutch over there all right guys we are really making some progress right now um as you can see we got uh, like all the top end put together, right? Yep. Did you get the throttle cable actually to work? No, nope, we gotta <coughs> figure out something for that. <coughs> it's not long enough. But that's an easy fix. We'll find something. Uh, yeah, we could even just rip the throttle cable out of the crap barrel. Yeah. Or move this, move these plates up forward more. Uh, oh. We'll see. Yeah, that'll work too. Wow, that's really close up on your face. <laughs> all right. So we got that all done. We got the other thing done, and we did the other thing with the one thing. So that leaves us the last with thing. The other thing, yes. The clutch. So. And cold feet. Cold feet. Are we going to take a warm-up break first yeah, and then it's clutch? It's only 1220 right now, p.m. P.m.? You mean a.m.? <laughs> um, so, yeah. Uh, next step is we're going to get this clutch to work, and it's going to be awesome because we're going to do it. Maybe after we go in and warm up a little bit. So uh, I can't feel my fingers. I was putting in that thing down there, and it was uh, the situation where you don't know whether you're spinning it or whether your fingers are just spinning on the end of the bolt because your fingertips are numb, and you can't tell the difference. 
which is actually pretty cool because then you can grip it a lot harder and spin it with a lot more torque because <laughs> you, it doesn't hurt your fingers. To but when you cut your fingers, you don't know. It's yep. just like blood is just like... You're just stripping really your good. fingertips yeah. out <laughs> and you, you can't even tell. Guys, so we are really making some progress with this, it seems. We got Z-Bar in. And Peter accidentally just went ahead and got the whole darn thing done. And Whoopsies. We forgot to record any of this, but... Uh, That's what she looks like. Oh, and it even goes back and forth like this. Look at oh. that. Yeah, this is a fuse box we got to watch out for. We should be fine. It looks like we're just going to drill, drill straight below where the... Up underneath here with the brake booster. The where the brake thing is from the brake pedal to the brake booster. <laughs> We're pretty much just gonna have to drill right smack underneath that. And then the bar that goes in there. It's sitting right there on the seat. I won't get it right now. But and we're probably not gonna record drilling this hole because it's probably gonna take a lot longer than it should. Yeah, and it's gonna be a pain in the butt. Um but yeah. Basically, this kit that we got for this thing is apparently just amazing. What, what did I pay for it? Not as much as you should have, probably. Probably not. Uh, it was like, it was either 119 or 130 or 160. If you get the whole kit together, it's like 300 bucks for the whole thing. But. And we bought the pedals and the Z-Bar kit separately, and it was came out to a grand total of like less than half yeah, of 300 like yeah, so you just get this bracket, this piece, and the Z-bar are separate, obviously. And the bracket, I guess, just goes right onto the side of the frame there. And then the, uh, there's like a big, there's a peg. What do you mean they give you self-tapper bolts? Those are like self-tappers. Or they're not holes in there the frame? There's holes there, but the holes aren't big enough. So they're, the, they're more like screws. They just kind of, like, make their own threads. As oh, well. okay. So those are screws, not bolts, really. Yeah. Basically. All right. And then up in here, there's, um, uh, you can see, this is like a peg, almost. So you have to screw this peg into the block. And from, at least for us, it went in pretty hard. We at first actually thought that it wasn't going to go in at all. So it goes in pretty hard, but, uh, it is right. It does go in. And then, yeah. Alright, we're going to drill a hole, and we'll be back when that's done. Just leave that one. Yeah. now where this is it's basically I don't know it's like three inches three inches to the left of the steering column and just a little bit down as you can see like the steering column you can see right there and then just basically I don't know two or three inches left of the steering column is right where this is to the initial hole I did I just stuck the drill Right between the clutch pedal and the brake pedal, and just punched a hole right through. Looks like garbage, but it's, it's like if you can see that bolt. That's the bottom the, of the brake booster. The bolt right above the hole sticking out of the firewall. That's the bottom of the brake booster. So we literally went right underneath the like as as close to the bottom of the brake booster as you can possibly get it without wrecking the brake booster. And that's where we want to send that. And now. See if we can get this in correctly. This is what we're dealing with right here. Nope. Not. Because it won't go over far enough. 
You're gonna have to help me because I have no leverage on this at all. And there's our hole. You're gonna have to twist it right there. And now, um, push towards the engine. All right, hang on. Stop, 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 stop. Hold it right there. Go more towards the engine. No, don't twist it, though. Yep. Oh, back. Right. No. Right there. What? What the heck? This hole is not big enough. I don't have enough leverage to get this in like this. I'm gonna move the clutch pedal back. Here, no, 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 stick it back through. I moved the clutch pedal, so maybe it'll be easier. Okay, scooch it out this way. And then. Like, help me out here, because I'm just pushing it against the wall. You need to hold it back out against the wall. Like, right? Yep, like that. It's going in. There we go. Got it. Nope, the rest are on one. Alright, so there's all the way out. And there's all the way back in. That's all the way in. Alright, folks. It is done. Wow, I couldn't think of a word there for a second. We won. We, we got it for the most part. Oh, as long as I can get this chunk of metal out of my eye. And as you can see, there it is in action. Yeah, there's out, and we got a little bit, it's rubbing a little bit on our hole, so if you see right there, that's, uh, yeah, there we go. I like so, the sport, this, uh, four speed light. It could stand to be over a little bit towards the edge of the car, away from the motor, because it is, you can see where it's rubbing there just a little bit, so we might fix that. You want to explain how you adjusted it? Pretty simple. Used. Kind of thing. There's like a that threaded rod in there. If you can see way right here, that's a threaded rod, and you thread it into the end of this part right here. Your hand is 20% in the way. We can make this longer even. Let's go up to here. Let's go up to here. Oh yeah, there's a second hole down at the very bottom. For the spring. And the spring hooks onto this deal. Like. Like, I can't get it through there right now. But. There, something like that. And it hangs onto it so it doesn't fall apart. Huh. Oh. Nice. So yeah, basically the, the rod in there is threaded on, and then there's a jam nut that you can see at the end right here, right between the two. And you just gotta, when the clutch is all the way out, spin it out so that it's all the way up against the edge of the clutch fork, this guy and then here. tighten the jam nut on. If you need more engagement, if it's not quite engaging all the way, you can actually screw this out into the clutch fork a little bit, so even when the clutch is all the way out, it's actually pushing the clutch fork in a little bit, like you can imagine, uh, just like screwing that thing 
this way more into the clutch fork and pushing it out even when the clutch is all the way out. Pushing the clutch in a little bit even when the clutch is all the way out. I don't think I did a very good job explaining that. There's probably better videos out there on how to explain that. But this is just our redneck way of doing it. And we basically just invented all this as we went. We watched like one, one other video on YouTube. Some guy doing it in a Chevelle. And uh, extrapolated that into Camaro use. <laughs> Put the light down there. There's a lot of adjustability on these. Um, we're probably not going to explain it. I guess if we have to do it, we'll explain it. But otherwise, you can probably watch another video on how to, on how to adjust it. It's just a threaded rod. And adjust it till it feels right slash works right. On the amount of like pre-clutch you have. Like how much... How much of the clutch is actually pushed in, even when the clutch pedal is all the way out, you can set a certain amount of pre-engagement or whatever, or pre-disengagement it would be with that threaded rod. Um, but all in all, this has worked out phenomenally. Alright, so that's going to be it for today. This was uh, part two of the uh, engine put in build kind of and um we'll have part three coming out soon so be sure to subscribe and wait for that to come out if you want to see this thing finally run and see if we can get this car to move under its own power this motor will run we know yeah. that it's run before but just to make sure everything else is buttoned up in here we got to wire it and put the accessories on and start it so that video will be coming out in the near future. We're going to do a video on brakes. We got all these goodies right here to put in some brakes. And so, yeah, we got lots more plans for this car in the coming future. So stay tuned for that, and we'll see you guys in the next video.